All right, good afternoon, everyone. This is the Urban Forestry Commission meeting, uh, January 19th, 2022. Welcome all. Um, I see no one from the public uh, attending the meeting, so I, we will dispense with uh, public comment. This meeting is being recorded. Um, I sent you just probably an hour and a half ago, maybe an hour ago, the minutes for our last meeting, plus the minutes of the subgroup meeting. So I would encourage you to take the time to read them both. Um, the subgroup meetings, I think, are particularly pertinent. They are pertinent to our conversation uh, down the line in the agenda about the STO. So when it comes time to vote on those, it's just uh, it's just Sue, myself, and David because we are that was the subgroup folks. So, but it's good for the co-commission to read them. So let me know when you are ready to move on either set of minutes. Please. So, uh, so, Rich. Yes. Um, you're saying we we the whole group won't be voting on this STO, just the three of you. No, the 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 minutes of the subgroup are oh, minutes of the subgroup. Right, only get only get um, moved and approved by the people that are actually on the subgroup. Right, but right. the information in them, I think, is pertinent to the conversation that the whole commission is going to have later on. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, sorry, that's okay. I, maybe I was not clear. I...
I'm all set. Robin Marilyn, are you still reading? I'm reading the STO okay. meeting, but I got it. I got it. I'm okay. Okay, I'm all set. Okay, excellent. Does anyone have any uh, comments? No. on the sub subcommittee meeting yeah um so i think so let's do this uh in this order if it's okay with everyone let's take the minutes from um our last full meeting um so if there's no questions or comments about our last full meeting then rob will talk about the subgroup meetings the subgroup minutes after that so um can i have a motion to accept the minutes um as presented for the 1 5 2022 meeting. I make a motion to accept the meetings as filed for the 120, I'm sorry, 105 2022 meeting. All right. Can I have a second, please? I'll second that. Thank you, David. Thank you, Sue. Uh, any discussion? No discussion. Uh, Deb, would you mind calling a, calling a roll call vote, please? Sure. Sorry about that. Rich? Uh, yes. Susan? Yes. <laughs> I almost said Violet. Sorry about that, David. No, I, um, my, I'm sorry about that. Uh, no, 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 no. Yes. Rob? Yes. Molly? Yes. In Maryland? Yes. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Okay. So um, the uh, second set of minutes, which really would only be uh, voted upon by Sue, David, and myself. Um, Rob, you had, before we make a motion, you had something you wanted to say about them? No, no, I was just okay. wondering if we were going to discuss them first or second. So we, we're all set. Okay. Uh, okay. David or Sue, um, barring any comments, I tried to, they're long, I'm, but I tried to capture everything that was said in that meeting because it was kind of important context for this meeting. So it took me a little longer. I apologize. Uh, I'm you, not a very good minute taker. You did a nice job. Those minutes are, are good. It's hard to take good minutes like that. Well, other than basically typing every word that you all said, yeah, I mean, I just I try to distill it the best I could, but anyways, I think they're helpful. Yes, Molly. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, there's one sentence that I didn't really understand. It's um, the last bullet point on page one. Um, where it says the second track is where all the other trees that are protected under by right development that is permitted by the building department. Is it supposed to say the second track um, includes all the other trees? Is that what that's supposed to mean? Yeah, let, let, me, let me find that. That's in the last bullet on the first page. Yeah. All the other trees that are protected. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess what I was trying to say is that um, my, um, you know, we can talk about this at more length, but what I was trying to say is that we have, um, we, we have basically have like three, we have three, we have three tracks that we run on when it comes to trees in the city. Trees that are privately held that are protected by right to, by right development is one. Trees that uh, are protected, um, under the STO, which presently are only 20 inches on another track that is enforced by the planning board. And the third track, which we didn't really talk about in the meeting, 
is the track of all the other trees that are held in the city's property inventory, such as public right-of-way trees, conservation trees, park trees, cemetery trees. So I was trying, I mean, I, I was trying to, that, that's what I was meaning. I don't know if it, uh, if the third track didn't add there, but I was trying to capture it the best I could, but that's what that means. And sometimes what happens is that all those tracks run parallel, but on occasion they will cross. And this is where you have a lot of confusion um, with uh, residents who don't understand um, just because of there's, there's so much information to absorb that, um, you know, by right development uh, for infill development um, that is, does not trigger the STO. So that's what I was trying to explain, basically. Mm. I probably could have worded it a little differently. I think that, yeah, just the wording of that sentence is confusing. Okay. Well, that's why we're going to have a discussion. <laughs> okay. So thank you. Um, Sue uh, and David, I, unless you have any comments, if you're willing to make a motion. I'll make a motion that accept the subcommittee subgroup meeting minutes from December 16th, 2001 mm -hmm. as presented. And I'll, I'll second that motion. Okay, uh, any discussion on the motion? Uh, barring any discussion, uh, Deb, could you take a roll call vote for the three of us, please? <laughs> Gladly. Rich? Yes. Susan? Yes. And David? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you to all. Uh, okay. Tree uh, chair report tree, uh, slash tree warden. Um, so I... Follow up from last meeting, I don't have any information um, about the, the public shade tree hearing potential that was going to happen at Harrison Avenue. That has not come to fruition. I will keep you posted. Um, I did send all of you uh, a copy of this year's seedling brochure for the Arbor Day uh, slash Earth Day, and I, I did hear back from Rob. So I would like to, if we have time somewhere tonight to go over that list with all of you, or if you have um, suggestions and you just haven't been able to send them to me, could you please send them to me? That would be great. Um, I also, uh, we can talk about this as part of Lantern Fly update, but Molly, I did get some information from the Mass Tree Wardens and Forestry Association. You may have already seen this website, but Penn State has a pretty good website, so you've seen it. Yeah, so yeah. That seems like the best resource that I yeah. can find. Yeah, they have a lot. Yeah, so we can discuss that later on, if that's okay. Uh, I'm uh, still working on, I am working, I've gathered all the um, expenditures for our Tree City USA application. So I work with Donna, I have them all right here. A couple of, mm. you know, so I need to distill this now and finish our application. So this, this month is really, for me, is about trying to, um, reconcile the uh, end of the year planting um, quantity and amount and location, and also trying to do the Tree City USA before the end of January. So those are my two tasks. Plus, I managed to pound out a set of minutes, and then I we had a little snowstorm, which was a little interruption. But yeah. Um, so I don't have anything. Uh, I did get an email from uh, Tool Design. Uh, they have submitted the twenty five percent design. Uh, and I just realized that they're asking for me to give comments as a tree warden uh, by the 21st. So I am going to work on that probably in the next day or two. Um, I haven't opened them, so I don't, you know, they, they're telling me that there's 25% design where they actually decided to put um, existing trees, uh, existing tree locations plus recommended uh, species replacement wow. based on our tree list and planting guidelines. So. I need to take a look at that so I don't, so I will have more information um, at our next meeting. So, so those, that's what I have to report. Um, I have not had a conversation with the new mayor yet. She is very busy. Uh, I don't even, I think Donna's only had a few conversations with her. So I haven't had a chance to explore uh, inviting her to a meeting, uh, but hopefully I will get to that uh, in the near future. Anyone have any questions? No questions. All right. Um, so 
Next, our next bulleted item is the year end planting review and discussion. So I just wanted to touch base with you. I, I've been still plugging away at reconciling the spreadsheet between um, the spreadsheet Rob has and the one that I that I showed you at our last meeting. I'm, I'm not gonna put it up on the screen because there's not very many changes. Um, I am gonna uh, have a little Zoom meeting with Beth Willard at the beginning of next week. Uh, so she can just help me reconcile a couple of things in there because she's the one that built the database about uh, how she was able to sort for um, the wards so I can get that data to you. So that'll be, I won't have really any information until the next meeting. So I think I'm gonna meet with you either Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, so I don't really have anything else. Uh, one thing though that I would like to just say is that Jen had sent me an email um, earlier in the week to, and she wanted to talk about our, uh, our soil, uh, amendment strategy while we're in the process of planting. I don't know, Rob, if she reached out to you or anyone else on the commission, but Jen was a, a little, uh, she's a little concerned about um, adding amendments, um, not necessarily adding the amendments, but the way we were adding them, which is when we were planting, we would um, add them um, as we were backfilling the tree instead of actually mixing the amendments in the soil that we were gonna put back as a one whole group. So she's afraid we're gonna make layering and I think she wanted to discuss it during this time frame. So I will leave this item like this uh, for next meeting, if that's okay with everyone. So Jen can, uh, Jen can have, uh, give us her thoughts. I don't know, Rob, do you have any thoughts or anyone else? Well, just that the, the amendments are something new and we haven't quite worked out exactly how to do it, both in terms of what we think is ideal from a sort of science point of view, but also just the energy that it takes to, you know, the labor, how, how to organize the labor of mixing it. And there's doing that's it actually, that, that, That's actually a really good point because it does take, an, it's an extra step for everyone. Uh, it's an extra step for my staff. It's an extra step for the volunteers. Um, you know, so it's actually, it's, it's sort of like baking a cake. It's easier just to kind of throw the ingredients in as you're going instead of like mixing the ingredient, ingredients on the cutting board and then taking the cutting board and dumping it in the hole, you know. So um, I think you're right, Rob. It's uh, just trying to get it, the parameters all set. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and just, and I mean, I'm not to make, uh, just, but I'm still trying to work with the volunteers to make the holes big enough sometimes. So getting <laughs> Getting everyone to like mix the amendments the same way um, is will also be a just constant positive reassurance that yeah you're doing it right no no back up hold on take a step back um, so and then um, it's not on the agenda but Rob and I uh, we Rob and I also we were in contact with Amherst Nursery. Um, Chestnut Ridge Nursery, and we received another contact from this nursery, Morning Morning Star. Yeah, is that the name, of Rob. I think it's in Rhode Island. Yeah, I haven't looked at what they have yet. Yeah, so we're we're trying to uh, we're trying to actually figure out what nursery stock is actually available um, that's plantable. Uh, maybe Rob could speak a little bit to uh, um, the uh, nursery stock that's on Amherst Nurseries list. Yeah, so Amherst Nursery has more trees than ever by quite a lot. They've ex they're they're really expanding, and um, and I think some years they're likely to have more trees that we would like to plant than ever. But this coming year, uh, they don't have them in tree bags uh, in, in the kind of numbers we want, the kind of trees that we're looking for. So we will be uh, looking for bare root trees from New York and we'll be looking for uh, other sources. And also uh, we'll be having a discussion with Amherst Nursery about they're supplying us with bare root trees because tree, they have a lot of trees that are now gonna be B and B and we find them very difficult to plant. Mm -hmm. They've offered the possibility that the B and B trees could be delivered bare root. The, the ones that would, they're growing in the field. so. It's a bare root tree if they dig it up and dump all the soil, and it's a B and B tree if they send it in the ball. So we'll be discussing them, their the possibility of bare root trees from them. 
it, it really, I've never, I've never quite seen their supply so misaligned with our needs mm. as this coming year in terms of bags and tree bags that are inch and a half diameter. Mm. It's just, well, that's what Rich and I'll be working on. Solve that riddle. Yeah, and then uh, also utilizing the data for um, the uh, tree planting locations um, that you all put together with Molly, I think is also important and trying to sort of like take those, trying to find backfill places with trees that are available. I think it's, I think forever we're gonna be playing this game where we, we are um, bound by locations to a certain degree, but then we're also bound by the available tree stock. And then we're bound by the tree list and planting guidelines as to what we would like to see planted. Um, and I really, yes, I really don't want to plant B and B trees if I can help it because it's it's a lot of effort and it, it short circuits our ability to plant in mass. Um, and we had a lot of um, we had a lot of good um, help this year from uh, volunteers uh, from, this, from from the city students. And we want to kind of keep that we want to keep that ball rolling. Um, and planting B&B &B trees, you have a lot of people just kind of standing around, just kind of watching. And there's a few people digging and a few people can handle it. And um, it also, the other, the other big thing too with B&B &B that I've discovered is that the amount of time, recovery time the tree needs um, to actually um, get acclimated to its, its new location and also grow new, um, you know, all the root mass that was left in the, in the nursery field is another problem. So aftercare is, the aftercare for B and B trees is uh, more intense. I think, to be honest with you, hmm. that that requires a level of maintenance on on the um, DPW end, of the forestry end, that's not necessarily able to be accomplished by volunteers the way we're presently organized. Hmm. So, just stuff to think about on the operational part of it, and then of course the big picture part of getting the right right tree in the right location um, based on you know places that we actually have left that are that, that are have been identified um that are not either in tree keeper but mainly in what molly and, and you all have put together by walking in you know um, um i think it doesn't go without saying that you have a pretty good ballpark idea of what you've planted a lot of in terms of species and families when you're seeking stock so you mentioned the planting guide and some other the, the stock constraints but and the type of tree like that bag and burlap or mm -hmm. well, burlap or so forth but it's also you do take in mind i understand what's been planted yeah so mm -hmm. very very much we we have a, a, a you know a, an idea not certainly in terms of you know like we're not down to like counting the last five or 10 trees, but we have a good idea of what's been planted. And um, uh, very few of the species that we that are new, that is relatively new, um, that would be um, things like sweet gum, uh, tulip trees, uh, Kentucky coffee trees, uh, bald cypress, Ginkgo, even though it looks like we planted a lot of them, um, in terms of uh, percentages of the overall tree canopy, they're all very low. We, we, we really haven't uh, planted anything that's beginning to be um, an issue, um, pretty much. Um, so I think that's gonna, that, that, will, that will be more of an issue a little bit further down the, the line I do think that when Rich and I discussed the future plantings, we've recognized that planting a lot of trees that grow in the eastern United States, redefining them as actually local, even if they grow in New Jersey. Uh, and that, that's all the list of, all the trees I just listed are included in that, the, the sweet gum, the bald cypress, the, the um, tulip. You know, tulip is native up here, but you hardly ever see them. Um, so 
we're, we, we kind of have our eye on these trees that grow to the south of us, um, yellowwood also. Um, and that's kind of what's in short supply right now. Yes, Molly. Um, I'm thinking um, it would be a good idea to somehow, um, as you're planting trees to actually record, like, look, if you're using those charts that I created, that we created for planting sites, we have to check off from that chart um, when they're planted, when, when those sites are planted or when they're checked and deemed to be not actually good sites after all, so that, so that the list is kept update, updated. Um, I'm not sure if the way to do that is to just like um, use that list by itself or to somehow integrate that list together with the um, list of trees that you're planting, you know, that you create a list of anyway. That's the point. Um, it's another layer of data that has to be managed somehow. So the question is, how do we, you know, I mean, the, the Excel spreadsheet that uh, Beth Willard put together that we've been using it's not really this it's not it's not an inventory system it's just to say this tree is in this location this is the species etc but we've kind of turned it into that um maybe um i don't know if this would work but when you're out planting trees bring that list with you and just add a column a check mark like um done you know planted just check on the list to see if it's if it's listed and check it off when it's done or write something like no good or something like that. Yeah, I think it would be, go ahead, Rob, sorry. Uh, you know, my, 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 um, my sort of knowledge of the, what constitutes downtown uh, for Florence and for Northampton, not so much for Leeds, would allow me just to scan down the list of all the trees that we planted that year and pick out the ones that should be picked out and probably transferred onto the other sheet. In other words, mm. in the office, it'd be pretty quick. I mean, I, um, to pick them out, uh, you know, so say there are 400 trees, it would probably take me 20 minutes to read down the list and tell you which ones are, I, I could be wrong because it could be like really close to half a mile, but not, and then you, someone would have to check it to see. Yeah, these are quarter mile, but- um, Quarter mile, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, so yeah, we you can look at it really quickly and, and see them uh, if they're in there or not after the fact. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I think it would be good if we are going to be going to a particular, if we identify a particular location that we want to plant that has multiple planting locations, we should have that documentation with us so we can actually yeah. you know, look around in the field and yeah. say, well, this, this was a, a good spot, but however, now it's, because we're doing this over here or something else has happened, we have to check that off as not being a spot or that's an excellent spot and we have a tree for it. And then that way there it's checked off and, and um, we got to figure out how to, we have to figure out how to keep track of that. And I, I'll be truthful with you. I don't have, I don't have enough bandwidth right now to actually manage another. So I'm managing sort of I'm managing two separate um, entities. I'm managing tree keeper which is basically work orders that are designed and inventory stock designed for the existing canopy. And then I'm, at, I'm uh, managing this small database that's an Excel spreadsheet um, to keep track of all the planting locations, species, ward, street, um, but also dovetails into um, the watering list. So that, that's the really important, that's the, the linchpin because without the watering after the fact of planting, we would be in a right. lot of trouble, obviously. Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess I'm saying if I went to with the, if I stood in in Florence or in Northampton and I had the the, the original uh, layout with me, I could fill it in just from my personal knowledge. At the you mean the map? You're talking about the map with the dots on it? Yeah, I could fill it in. Yeah. Mm. And I couldn't fill it in. Just from the names of the streets, because often yeah. it's confusing. But if I had the, if I stood there or even at home, yeah, I can fill it in. Well, if you could do that, then yeah. I could take that information and you know put it on the spreadsheet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how how do you want to do that? Just at the end of the year, or at the end of like how often? Well, I think the uh, any area where we do any kind of significant planting, I should probably do it 
at that point. In other words, if we don't plant somewhere, then that year we don't even have to. Like, All right. Uh, well, if you if you do that and then send me the um the numbers for those trees, like F, you know, F one two or whatever the numbers are, the list of those trees, and then I'll check them off on the spreadsheet. Yeah. So last year we did quite a few plantings that got pretty close to downtown Northampton. And we're going to do a bunch this year, we think, if we get the stock, we have a bunch we can do. And so I could just fill those in. Um, I don't think last year we did anything near downtown Florence. So the, the year before we did. So it's, yeah, it's all there. Uh, I probably- um, so I wonder, I wonder, Rob, if uh, we, you have to backpedal a little bit in some of the places that were identified in Florence, we can actually check off the list. Yeah. So, so we already have probably multiple things that could be either checked off as being planted or maybe things that are not necessarily going to work out. Yeah. Or we have to go back and capture a setback. Yeah, I definitely have it in my, I mean, I might be wrong. Maybe my memory will fail me, but I think pretty much anything that we have planted or have decided we can't plant, what I won't know is some of the sites that are suggested, whether they'll ever work, you know, whether they'll work out or, you know, the future is, I won't know. Okay. This is just a suggestion, but if you sent Molly the, just the list of all the addresses we planted, Molly, is that something you could- Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah copied it out of the, the big spreadsheet that we were looking at last week, put it in a new work spreadsheet and just send it to Molly and Molly could sort it by address and then, keep that list yeah i can definitely do that okay well that would be kind of if you did that then i wouldn't well is that just doing the same work i'm doing in another way or is it different it's it's just a different way to do it right so that'd be that'd be good is and, it but i'll do it i'll focus on instead uh what we're about to do and what we can't do okay okay yeah, you'll see. I think it's pretty easy when you see the list. You'll see that. Uh, the, also, you can look at the ward list when it gets sorted by ward, and then uh, you'll that takes out. You know, if you do ward one, it'll be a short list. Rich, how would you feel about saving a copy of that big master list? Just go to the list and save as copy, and call it copy for mm -hmm. Urban Forestry Commission in mm -hmm. one of put it in a shared folder yeah, it would just be yeah. a matter of saving a file but no, in a place and then we wouldn't have to worry about messing it up but it would have all that data that's a great idea planted yeah it would just be a copy and clearly marked so it didn't get mixed up with the original so that that is yeah i would make like a working copy for ufc um yes that's the goal but i i need to i need to get it recorded okay. for you first and i i don't Clearly understand how Beth did it. I don't know if she did it manually, but like the wards, so we can we can see how we planted by ward. Um, because right now, I, for twenty um, for twenty 2020 twenty and twenty 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 one, I can't give you that data. So then we can't go back to the first sheet, which um, broke down all the plantings by ward up to that point. So I, I want to have that for you, so you can actually look at it and see if we've actually met our goals exceeded our goals, got to go back and, you know, fix things that we missed um, along with uh, the priority planting areas. Um, so I need to, I need to get that squared away. Yes, I would, that was my intent was to put a copy in there that you could, that you could work off of. And then the copy that I will keep is the master list um, that I work off of for operations with Brooke. And then I can, um, the documents can get merged and refreshed if, if needed, I think. You or know. just make a new copy for us periodically. Yes. From yep. the original. Yep. Yep. That's why I don't, like I try to load everything up as I we plant every week because sometimes Rob, was, uh, Rob and I will be planting, uh, wanting to plant in a certain place and maybe we have a little bit of a miscommunication about what tree goes where. Or, or we add an extra tree we don't need. And so I, I don't, I like to do the um, adjustments right that same day when I'm done, but I sometimes just can't get to it. And then, you know, I, 
it's just a lot of a lot of moving parts. So uh, my apologies, I'm a little slow, but I'll be honest with you, not having, um, not sometimes having a little bit of extra um, support um, because there is a lot of paperwork involved in this job. There's a lot of tracking mechanisms and yeah. not having sometimes enough support in that end of things. And I appreciate everything all of you have done and Deb, um, you as well, you know, but you know, the, uh, the DBW office um, has one less clerk position than they did two, one and a half years ago. So that's put a little bit of a strain on the record keeping aspect of things, but we're, we're trying to, we're, we're, make, we're making our way through it. So um, one thing I did want to tell you is that our, in our Davy resource uh, tree management plan, um, you know, they, they talk about species diversity. Um, you know, the composition of tree populations should follow the following, the 10, 20, 30 rule for species diversity. A single, a single species should represent no more than 10% of the urban forest, a single genus, uh, no more than 20%, and a single family, no more than 30%. Hmm. So this rule is sort of what Rob and I have been trying to follow for all the new plantings. Um, but we, you know, we're obviously, we can't correct, we can't correct what exists, but we can um, add to what exists to try to correct that. So. Um, and to give you an example, I know we've talked about this. Um, our the ten percent rule in this um, for a single for a uh, ten percent rule for for a, a single oh, sorry uh, single species. So basically, um, red maple is the only species of uh, tree that actually is at ten percent. This was in two thousand sixteen. Hmm. Um, I think that's less because we've cut red maples down and we haven't planted any. So we're doing, we're going in the right direction. Um, the, uh, so Acer uh, far exceeds the recommended 20% maximum yeah. um, for genera. So we obviously have a maple problem, which we are all aware of and we are trying to, uh, trying to correct. So, and, um, you know, 32% uh, Oak is the second most common uh, genera, which is 13% of the population. So again, based on the recommendations in here and industry standards, that's how we're trying to select um, the, the tree stock and also trying, trying to also select the appropriate stock that fits the planting location. I, I so want to add that um, at the that moment, uh, spe the new species that we're adding, uh, you know, that were either not planted or very sparsely planted previously. Um, for the moment, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to stay at 5% for each of those trees. So in other words, we won't exceed 5% of Kentucky coffee tree, ginkgo tree, uh, uh, sweet gum tree, lind um, tomatosa linden, you know, there are, because we have, we're planting such a wide variety, um, and there there is a a, a a paper that I don't have right on. It's on my desk somewhere, you know, on my that really suggests that the 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 ten twenty thirty rule that some people like to look at it as uh, five ten fifteen, and uh, I have that. I can share it with whoever wants to see it, and 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 that's. Uh, I kind of holding that up as the ultimate best opportunity. Yeah, Rob, can you send that to all of us when you find it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the same thing they recognize that everyone has different st standards. There's no absolute, but uh, I've partly taken that one as a um, as a guide because if you stick to that, you can do no wrong and. Uh, in terms of overplanting anyone's species. All right. Well, does anyone else have any questions or anything they would like to add? Marilyn, are you doing okay over there? I have a, a question. I, there's probably a good reason for this, but has the city considered partnering with a nursery to just germinate trees from? From seed. 
Uh, no. So, so they were probably, I mean, germinating from seeds would be one thing, but you, the, the other is would they get, buy stock whips and then grow them into trees, which, um, so John, you know, I think if we went to John and told him what we wanted, he potentially would help us. Maybe. For people who don't know, John is Amherst Nursery. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so one of the um, one of the problems that I would foresee, one of the procurement problems that I would foresee with that, is that if we were to buy or partner with a nursery, um, there would be an expectation that in however many years when the tree is harvestable, that we would actually be back to harvest it to take the tree. So that means that we would have to enter into a multi-year contract to assure that the nursery provider would actually get, um, you know, for all the effort that they have done caring for the tree and planting it and maintaining it, that we actually would be back to buy it. Because if there was no contract, then there really is no um, you know, if I fell off the face of the earth, Rob retired and, you know, we decided not to plant trees again. Now the nursery is holding 1000 trees that they, they would offload, but they never got paid for their services rendered, which in the end is us buying the $140 tree from John as services rendered. So our procurement process here doesn't allow us to enter into multi-year contracts like that. You're allowed to enter into a one-year contract um, with, um, a certain percentage of an extension for one year moving forward with nominal price increase increases. And it depends upon the type of procurement that you are um, looking to do. So, so for example, um, Davy Resource Group, uh, Tree Keeper, um, we have a, a yearly subscription with the service. They have a great deal for uh, a seven year subscription but our procurement is such that we are not allowed to enter into a seven-year contract with a, a vendor. Mm. So um, mm. that that would be David. It's a good. It's a great. It's a great process, and that's why a lot of places I think David actually propagate um, like Burlington, Vermont. They have a community tree nursery um, that um, they re, they work with this called Branch Out Burlington, which is um, a similar nonprofit to Tree Northampton, but they actually have a nursery that has like 600 to 800 trees in it. Mm. Um, and Branch Out Burlington, the volunteers actually work with the city to plant the bare root stock in the nursery and they propagate it for a period of years and then it gets harvested. So an in-house nursery would be more, would be um, probably easier, but it would really, we'd have to rely heavily upon volunteers and I don't see us having the volunteers at the moment to do that. Yeah, that's Burlington, Vermont. Yeah, yeah, Branch Out Burlington. I'll send you a- uh, I'll, I'll just check it out, out. yeah. Yeah, I'll send a link to you, their website. Um, so that, but it's, it's a great thought. It's just how would we make it happen and be consistent and make sure that you know, the nursery stock needs to be paid attention to on a daily basis, et cetera. So it's a lot of time. Um, anyone else have any questions, comments? From videos I've seen, harvesting them takes a certain amount of equipment too. Yeah, it, it does, depending upon what you're, you know, yes, you, you, you want to be and be. I mean, some places they, they put the trees uh, in the ground in grow bags. That's, I've seen that. Some places actually put the number two premium liners in the ground and harvest them, um, you know, without the bag on them as a bare root. Um, it, it, all, it all depends. You know, I think it's, right now it's more sustainable for us to buy trees that have already been harvested by someone else. Um, and we're fortunate that John is like close by. Imagine if John was like in upstate New York, it was the reverse, we, we it would be a real, you know, Rob and I just run over to, to Hadley whenever we need an extra tree or we want to check something out and then we just come back and it's not like we were gone for five hours. So we're fortunate in that sense. But I think that uh, John is also uh, trying to diversify his inventory um, and a lot of uh, the trees that he is um, selling um, are now to more for other commercial installers 
which prefer larger trees, which you can, you know, basically is the B and B tree. That's why John has planted a lot of his uh, open field there with B and B trees. So, so this year, we, you know, as always, we always say it's going. We always say it's going to be a challenge every spring, and we always seem to overcome um, the challenges somehow. So we'll we'll figure it out. Okay. Any other comments before we move on to the next agenda item or questions? Okay. So our next agenda item is um, the uh, STO subgroup discussion. So I sent you, you, you have read the minutes, so you have a really, hopefully a good um, snapshot of what was discussed at that, that subgroup meeting. Um, I sent you earlier um, the, a packet that had the tree zone map and also the, um, the PNS STO changes, which were the proposed uh, track changes from, and I'd like to actually, unless someone else has something, however, someone else has a, another suggestion, I think I would like to go through that document line by line with everyone. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, let me know if... Uh, Anyone else wants to talk? I'm more than, more than happy to, to have someone else talk. Um, uh, all right. Before I start, David and Sue, do you have any overarching context you want to give to this discussion before we go through this thing line by line? Oh, thank you for asking. So okay. you're, you're going to go through the, the planning and sustainability document now, right? Yeah, I'm going to go through the one that I sent you, which was a PNS STO change. And this this is what Carolyn and Wayne sent back to me after uh, I had we had a meeting in their office. So our, this is the response to our original changes that we worked on last um, spring and early summer that got sent to them for review. And I had a meeting with them in August. Carolyn took a while to get back to us. Then David, uh, Sue, and I have met twice since then. The last meeting, uh, as you saw in the minutes, we met with Carolyn to discuss um, reasoning why they came back with a sliding um, sliding scale uh, um, versus just making it a set number across the city. Um, so that's also, we need to discuss all of that as well. So I guess, I think the overview, my understanding is, you know, we, we were setting, we were trying to decrease the number at which the STO protects a tree. And they didn't want to take our numbers lock, stock, and barrel, if I recall. What they came back with was, oh, we'll lower them significantly in areas where we want to discourage development to make it more expensive. So they harnessed, you know, their priorities and incorporated it into something. So it moves us forward a little bit, not as far as we want to go. And it was a way that they could get on board with it because we, again, back to the overview to try to get support for change going forward, working with them. Whereas if we you know, put out something that they totally don't agree with, it's not going to get us very far. Hmm. But you're you're muted. That's a good overview, Sue. Thank you. And I think, as it said in the in the minutes, that uh, somewhere in one of those bullet points, Carolyn talked about how they are not really interested or actively trying to pursue reducing the DVH of um, significant trees. Um, but the it just so happens that the reduction in DVH um, fits within their parameters of smart development in certain zoning, uh, in certain uh, areas of the city um, where they don't want to encourage development, as Sue has said, which is in the outlying areas that have more forested, um, more forested landscape, larger, more forested landscape versus the more urban centers of the city where they're trying to encourage people to uh, do smart, smart development, uh, people to walk, people to bike, um, people to actually have, um, you know, um, net zero, uh, net zero home construction, et cetera. 
So as Carolyn described it, it's a multi-pronged attack and we're like, we are responsible for one, por one portion, one small portion of that prong, of one prong, basically. You know, we are not responsible for deciding what the building code is and how many cars everyone should have and, you know, how, how to reach carbon neutrality. We're, so, um, so this really, so basically this is the, this document and is everyone see it or do you want me to put it up? No, not yet. Put it up. Put it up. Okay. Hold on one second. Sorry. That would be helpful, right? So right now I'm looking at the one with the corrections or should I be looking yeah. at the, yeah. Uh, so I, I have a screen share. So can everyone see that? Yes. Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay. So this was the, or this is a um, document that Carolyn sent back. So what they propose is they propose to change the name from significant trees um, to, uh, what are they calling them? Mature mature canopy trees. Hmm. Um, so it would be uh, delete. So they deleted significant tree in the definition. Um, they also uh, changed, it says inventory of any mature canopy trees as defined um, in 350-12.3. Uh, All such trees that are slated for removal and that are along the edge of the work limit shall be noted. So I, I have an issue. I personally have an issue with this, uh, where the, the last bulleted, where the, she said deleted by an arborist, which shall classify such trees in terms of location, species size, health, and long-term viability. Um, I I don't necessarily. I have to get back with her because I can't remember why she deleted this. But I actually, this was the original wording in here. But there has to. I'm looking for an inventory from when I get inventory from Carolyn that's uniform, uh, industry standard, so I can actually look at it and understand exactly what they're cutting down and why they're cutting it down. So if, if, if it's, uh, and this is also a, another conversation piece is that um, the STO uh, only captures trees really that are slated to be removed that are 20 inches and greater at the moment. The question is, is that do we want to ask um, individuals who are developing these projects, designing them, to actually capture all the trees that are going to be removed so we have a better understanding of how much canopy is actually being lost. So it's really all about data and trying to um, understand how much canopy is being lost through these large projects, not just trees that are 20 inches um, that you can easily um, turn around and, and understand what the benefits are through like uh, um, high tree. Uh, so oh, Rich, could, yeah. could I, so, yeah, you know, this is the first uh, time I've seen this proposed change away from significant tree to mature canopy tree, yeah. um, just for the benefit of the other commissioners. That's not like something we all workshopped. To me, it's, it's a bit pro pro problematic. I don't really see what's gained by changing the terminology. Um, so I think people are li liable to bicker over, is it a mature tree? Is it a canopy tree as mm. opposed to just a s clearly defined significant tree? But that's that's one thought I have. Yeah, I would I would also argue that um, to strengthen the ordinance, we would want to be consistent with wording. If if this is a significant tree ordinance, then I, I think the use of I think the, the the language is important. Is my point right? So I mean, there has to be. Um, so then the question is, is that what is a significant tree? I mean, that that's really that has to be defined. Uh, it is in that next section. It, it is defined, but really, what what makes that twenty inch tree significant over the next tree that's twenty inches? I think is where. It's, it can be the same argument that we use for mature. I'm not saying I like either one of them, mature canopy tree. Mm. But you know, what what is considered a mature? You know, what is the definition of a mature canopy tree? So th this is where industry standards are helpful. Um, you know, like the term champion tree. Massachusetts has a champion tree program. Is another example. 
you have champion trees. Well, what is a champion tree? And they give you a definition of what a champion tree is. Um, Let's see what it says in that section 35012 three. Uh, I'll have to look it up uh, because it's not here. Well, it's right down at the bottom of the page. Right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, they, they, so they deleted significant tree and they put tree uh -huh. replacement. Mm. There's actual, there's an actual definition there, uh, in section um, 11, 11, I think it's 11.21. I'll have to go back and look it up. So let me, let me, uh, do you want to keep moving or I'm going to stop and look? I can look that up in zoning code a minute if you want me to look it up right now. It's up to you. I don't. Well, what do you do it quickly? Okay. Yep. Uh, Hold on one second. got to go to e-code because the, so the problem is the way the zoning code is written is all the definitions are in a different place um so i have to go to e-code northampton to actually do you have any idea what carolyn was thinking what motivated her to change the language i don't remember to be honest with you i think okay. we should have asked probably should have asked her um I think it was mainly about um, what what makes a tree significant tree, you know. Um, okay, uh, three fifty two point. Okay, significant tree. So the significant tree language, um, which is. In the zoning code under general, any any tree of 20 inches diameter at breast height DBH or larger than any other tree specifically identified as a specimen tree. Um, hold on one second, I just have to move you all over. I'm sorry, specifically identified as a specimen tree on any tree inventory plan adopted by the planning board. That's the definition, which is what, what you see up here. So deleted is the actual definition of significant tree. Oh. So what I agree with you, so you have what they call a mature canopy tree on line, on, you know, pull it one here, and then you scroll down and they don't talk about significant trees or any type of mature canopy tree. They just say tree canopy replacement. So that has to be, that question needs to be asked why it says mature canopy trees and it doesn't say mature canopy tree replacement uh, in 350, 12.3. That's, so that is. Especially since it specifically said as defined in 350, 12.3, you go to 350, 12.3 and it's different wording. Yeah, so um, legislative findings and intent, the city of Northampton finds that trees enhance air quality, reduce noise, energy, flow, et cetera. Um, and so what they did is Carolyn, Remove mature, I mean, significant and put mature trees during development and redevelop projects that require site plan approval, special permit, comprehensive permit finding, or variance. So, okay. Well, Anyone else? Go ahead. Well, in, in section B, they, they kind of, they don't, they describe what a mature tree is and, the, and then it varies depending on the zone it's in. Right, so, so. so that might be why they did that because now they can define mature tree as being only six inches if it's in S C R R or F E R. Yeah, you know, that's actually a good point, Rob. That's possibly an explanation as to why they just said. I mean, 
So in that case, why would they even use the word mature? It should just right. say exactly. You should just say canopy tree. Yeah. I mean, the other thing too is that I've also seen a U or a, uh, a, a hemlock hedge that's six inches or greater, mm. which has been trimmed its whole entire life. Right, right. We have them here at the cemetery. So that's another, mm. that is a mature tree, but it's not a mature canopy tree because it's only eight feet tall or 12 feet tall. Mm. So, Should we suggest they take out canopy or what do we want? No, no, they would take out mature. Because yeah, because a mature tree could, as Rich just said, not meet those re height requirements or girth requirements. Right. Uh, same thing with an underwire tree. So an underwire tree could be mature, but it's never going to reach the definition of what we think is a mature tree for an underwire tree uh, would be, for example, um, the cherry trees on Warfield Place. I, it's a good example of a very, very mature, almost overly mature cherry tree. Uh, tree, but they may not actually reach 20 inches in DVH. Right. So I think we need to change that. I agree. So what about just using shade tree? Because um, canopy is also a troublesome word too, because some of those trees would only ever be like sub canopy trees. Right. Yeah. I like shade tree because then it, it would, they define it. And so there's the definition. Big enough to produce shade. Well, I mean, they define it just by DBH. Mm. And so, and and I think we're we're allowing that. We're saying, okay, we'll just we'll just define it by DBH. And so, defining it in other ways with words like mature or significant or canopy can get us in trouble. Whereas if you just say in this little. Um, box they have where it says mature trees located in district zones um, zoning if it just says shade trees then whatever it says on the right in terms of dbh that's all we go by we don't go by other factors and you know it could get in trouble a little because as rich points out you might find a hedge that's not a shade tree it creates uh -huh. too many opportunities for loopholes i i really wonder if they thought they were trying to be clarifying or or, or allowing. Yeah, but if you say shade, tree, I, don't, interpretation. I, don't see, I don't see that there are a lot of loopholes. Um, yeah, no, I'm. Yeah, I agree with what you're suggesting, Rob. I'm saying the language that they propose, I think, invites confusion and right. loopholes. But I think they yeah. simply did it because they wanted to make their own definition of what a what the trees are trying to regulate, because they don't actually match. It doesn't actually match up with significant tree. The definition. Yeah. So, so just can I point something out? Just the one thing that I would be concerned about shade tree is that um, where people will get tripped up is that a white pine is not a shade tree. Wow. White pine is not considered a shade tree, even though it could be 100 feet tall. Hmm. Um, they're not considered shade trees. When, when people think of shade trees, they think of deciduous, broad spreading, large crown. Hmm. So I'm, how about I'm, just trees? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just trees. Yeah, maybe that would be better for everyone yes. involved. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Keep it as simple as possible. Mm. Okay. I, I'll just point out too that the you know uh, 350.12.3a, the legislative findings and intent. I mean that that could be improved based on 2022 understanding of how things work, like. There's no mention of stormwater mitigation there. There's no mention of climate change there. I mean, so I think there's an opportunity for this commission maybe to improve that too. Again, this is this is why this is in front of you. I I would encourage you to send me all of your thoughts about what things should look like because it will we will have a we'll go back and we'll talk to planning and sustainability yep. while we're doing it. So that's 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 a good point as well. So David, a point well taken. Did, did you have that in there at one point and they took it out or just never made it in or? No, I think this is just in, this was last amended in like 2015. Right, but, but, you, but you've been uh, thinking about the STO and you just, it just hasn't evolved yet. Or, or I, I, I think we put that in, it was taken out and then. Okay. 
So this just reflects an old draft. Ah, okay. So the, uh, I'm just trying to make little notes where um, one, two, point three. So we're talking instead of mature, we're going to talk section of trees during development, not mature trees, potentially. And then um, B would be that's A. B uh, would be also uh, no person shall remove any tree or any any trees. A tree as defined. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. So I don't. Right. I don't want to make any trouble too much, but just a quick question. Um, maybe we don't want to include white pines because they fall apart. But you can work on that later. I mean. So I so that that's a, that is a uh, that is a good that's a good point because the original draft from 2015 yeah. um, talk basically said that uh, this coniferous trees were exempt from this zoning. Right, and that, that got changed. I can understand why coniferous trees might be exempt. You know, good reasons in in the winter time. They're pretty much undesirable um, if they're on the south, east, west, or south side. I don't know. Yeah, they, they are. But my my take on that is uh, that actually they're more they are. <laughs> my opinion, my professional opinion is is uh, coniferous trees are actually um, they're working twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Yep. Yeah. Where. Where, where deciduous trees are, you know, the benefits of deciduous trees. I mean, yes, they are drinking in the winter when they they're can't. They're sleeping most of the time. They're asleep on the job all the time. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and, and, and they require a tremendous amount of uh, energy and effort and their carbon sequestration rate, um, that they actually expend more carbon trying to wake up and actually, um, you know, actually leaf out versus um, the amount of carbon that's expended for a coniferous tree when it's actually going through its needle drop. Hmm because it, it's constantly sequestering carbon year round. That's something I learned when I took that course yeah. at UMass, which I was not aware of, very interesting fact. And I will find the information and send it to you because it, uh, I might have to copy it out of this book I read, but. Next but anyway. time I see a conifer, I'll be nicer to it. Yeah, you need to be friendly to the conifers, Rob. Come on now. Okay. okay. Um, all right, so then uh, under B, um, Mature would just, we would take out mature canopy and just put trees mm -hmm. on the table below. Mm -hmm. And then this table would just say trees located in zoning districts, et cetera. And this is the proposed table that goes with the map. Um, So here, you know, here's here's an example under this table where C, the removal of any such tree, doesn't say mature tree, it just says such tree. So it's a little, um, it's a little uh, um, mm. contradictory already. Uh, after um, or within uh, after within 12 months immediately prior to such uh, site plan or zoning relief shall be subject to this section. Yeah. So that's nice because it. Deletes the date. It's not a hard date any longer. Um, is there any? Is it worth considering whether to exclude certain tree species of trees from this, like um, like the winged euonymus? I'm not sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, Ailanthus and Norway maple, for example, or is that getting too weedy? My opinion is it's a little too weedy because even though those trees are undesirable and they are being removed there, and they, if they are deemed to be healthy, then there is a mitigation factor for them. Mm. It allows the city to capture the mitigation monies um, or forces the developer to you know, mitigate through planting of new trees on our approved list. So I, I, I guess I wouldn't want to miss that opportunity even though they are undesirables. Mm. That's my, my point I take, but. At some point, you know, depending on what we decide to do about the spotted lanternfly, it's possible that we might be recommending that people get rid of their Atlanta streets. And we don't want that to, like, people who get rid of their Atlanta to have to pay a fine for it. Would that apply? 
Right. So that's that's actually a good point because uh, the same thing goes for ashes. So if you have a you know 21 inch ash uh, uh, area that you are going to harvest because you're going to build a building there, the question. And so this goes back to using industry standards to determine a tree inventory. So if if uh, an arborist goes and looks uh, for the developer on this project and says, yes, you have 20 ash trees that are that are loaded with emerald ash borer um, or are, have emerald ash borer, but are not at the tipping point where they need to be removed. But I would recommend that you go back to the planning board and ask them um, to exempt those trees from the, uh, the tree ordinance because they are actually um, they're, they're hazardous trees or they're high risk trees. See, there's no, and the same thing would go for the, um, the Lanthus um, because that tree is a non-desirable tree because of its attraction to um, spotted lantern fly. Yeah, plus it's invasive. Yeah, I mean, so, so really the, the way that I would do this in a, in a perfect world if I was responsible for writing this is that I would actually Create some kind of language in here that would reference a document that is constantly changing. And oh, that's it, a good idea. The way that we did this is that we we um, we, we keep referencing this in the city's tree list and planting guidelines, which is a guideline that we can update as much as we want. Mm. Just, like a, just like a regulation, once you make it an ordinance, then it becomes so tight there's no workaround room. So I, I, that's how I would deal with that if I was writing this by myself. Yeah, that makes sense. For myself, without, you know, planning sustainability's input, I guess. But that's actually, that's actually a good point. I mean, that's the re that's one of the reasons why I wanted an art, um, or, or have, make an, have an arborist actually provide an inventory because an arborist actually will do a, everything, including the tree risk assessment, the term, so which helps the which helps the developer in essence because if there's a tree that we are saying because the ordinance is written as such that that tree must be protected but they're going to do a they're going to excavate within 10 feet of the root system in reality the chances of that tree surviving even with the appropriate um, plant health care methods that tree is probably going to fail but wouldn't it be better just to remove the tree now get the mitigation for the tree uh, either through financial or planting and be done with it and, and move on. I, I know that that, that doesn't, um, that, doesn't pr that doesn't help with the goals of the present climate emergency, but what it does do is it helps at least if we don't do it, then what happens is that tree four years from now dies and whoever owns the property cuts it down and that tree and its DBH is forever lost. Mm. There's no mitigation for it. Yeah. Another way to look at it. Am I understanding correctly that with ordinances, you can't write them? If I'm understanding correctly, there's no way to write this with referencing the beneficial tree list, the approved tree list, or to the discretion of the tree warden. Oh, there is. It's in there. So basically, we anytime. Uh, a developer who falls under the SDO wants to plant trees in a, in, a, in a project, they have to follow our tree list and planting guidelines. Mm. They also have to provide tree protection measures based on our tree list and planting guidelines and by you know the approval of the tree warden. So yes, you, you can you can do it, and that's how you you know you have a boilerplate document, this ordinance that says you shall follow X, Y, and Z. And then it references these individual documents that are, um, in, um, you know, basically administered and enforced by the executive branch, which includes all of us. Mm. Anyone else have any questions or comments up to this point? We're at, we're at, we're at 550. Um, is everyone okay with just continuing this till six? Yeah, I would just jump in and say, David had a comment and just want to make sure we're on the same page. We're going to, we want to take out mature trees and just call them trees. And then David wants to add stormwater mitigation and water, cleaning water. 
So what I what I what I encourage you to do, um, sorry to interrupt you. What I encourage you to do is anything that you want to change in here or add. Um, you all have this document. If you don't have it, I'll send it to you again. Just let me know. But make your comments to me, um, and then I will capture them all. And then I think the best way to do that would be David, Sue, and I would probably have another individual meeting to hash through them, or we can just meet as a whole commission and discuss them. That's entirely. I'll leave. I, I'll leave that up to your discretion. But yes, that's. Those are the changes so far, but if you want to re rework this um, 350-12.3a, uh, uh, then feel free to do so. So the title tree canopy replacement, I'm taking notes. What do we want to do with that? Uh, it would just be tree replacement. Tree okay. replacement. I'll type this up and send it to you. Okay. I just want to make sure we come out of here with a clear sense. A add stormwater mitigation yep. be mature strike okay yeah you want to go further yep. um, everyone, everyone else okay if i move down or move up or whatever this is <laughs> um everyone's okay with this change right here see removal of uh, such tree after uh, mm -hmm. okay all right okay i think i already went over that um, city owned public. Okay, so here's the exemption. So let's go back up here. Okay. Um, the requirements of this section uh, shall not apply to trees located on property under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. City owned public shade trees pursuant to MGL Chapter 87. Uh, three, trees associated with emergency projects necessary for public safety, health, and welfare as determined by the building commissioner, director of planning and sustainability, or director of public works, or tree warden. So I, I added that because the folks that are ahead of this are not tree experts. So whoever is if yeah. the tree warden or whoever comes after me um, will have the power to, uh, because really remove, uh, to say whether or not a tree has to be removed for an emergency situation. Um, so do all those people have to agree or just one of them? Just one. Four. Yep. Four, yeah. Yep. And this should get fixed. It should say, or over here should disappear. Yep. Comma, yeah. Yep, comma, director of public works, comma, yep. or tree warden. Mm -hmm. Uh, number four. So what they deleted was due to disease, age, or shallow roots as determined in confirmation and writing by a certified arborist reviewed by. And what they replaced it with is uh, trees that are deemed hazardous upon completion of a risk assessment by a tree risk qualified certified arborist. So that means that if uh, a developer hires an arborist to do a project, the arborist does a tree risk assessment and it is deemed hazardous, which is the, the terminology in industry standard, those trees will be exempt from the STO. So if there's a 30 inch DBH tree that looks like it's really a gorgeous tree and it looks got a full canopy, but it's got a huge shear plane crack in the middle of the trunk, potential for it's deemed hazardous, um, it would be exempt. Mm -hmm. Um, such trees may only be waived from these requirements when assessments are reviewed and approved by the planning board upon consultation with the city's tree warden. So I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Because this is, this is a um, ordinance, zoning ordinance that's driven by the planning board. Uh, number five, uh, trees affected by, the, uh, by work performed by a utility company and maintenance of its right-of-way or its maintenance, repair, or replacement of infrastructure that is unrelated to a development project. Uh, required zoning relief. Six, trees that are approved for removal through a special permit by the planning board. Uh -huh. A, the board may grant special permit if after weighing the benefit of significant trees. So that needs to be fixed. So could you make a note of that? 
I'm sorry, this is where uh, are we part three of Yep. We are under oh. section D. Hold on, I'm gonna scroll up. Don't get a headache, everyone. D D six part A. A. Significant Change. Yeah, should just say right. This should just say Ooh. remove some. Okay. Okay. Remove significant. Yeah. Marilyn, I'm sorry. I hope you're not getting a headache by this going up and down. I hope it's not making it worse. Oh, that's okay. I already have a computer headache. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, uh, one, trees are removed in order to create net zero energy buildings for electric and thermal use of up to 10,000 square feet or to install 10,000 square feet of ground mounted PV panels, in addition to providing one or more community benefits, which may include affordable housing units where 50% or more of the units are deed restricted for affordable housing as defined in this chapter 350. So that is something that was changed um, quite a while ago, and I, I don't personally have any objection to any of that. Um, again, this is where the multi-pronged um, push for multiple ways to get to be carbon neutral and work with each other. Uh, a project that results in permanently protected open space. Um, the next one is building square footage uh, shall apply to a single building footprint or to the aggregate of two or more buildings in order to exercise special permit. Granted under this section, applicants must present a building permit that has been issued for specific plans showing compliance with net zero standard and must construct in accordance with the special permit within one year of the issuance of a building permit. Planning board special permit to grant waiver for replacement within this provision is allowed for only trees necessary to be removed in order to provide the solar access to the buildings and or panel array. E, any person removing a significant, uh, again, E right here, Sue, needs to be removed, should say tree. E. Yep. Remove. Significant. Got it. Um, shall, and this is section shall satisfy either one of the following conditions, provide replacement trees in accordance with the following standards. A, replacement trees shall be non-invasive, deciduous, or coniferous, as defined by the city's tree list and planting guidelines. So that's our caveat to actually use, uh, change this city's tree list and planting guidelines as, as warranted as the climate changes, et cetera, as things warm, as things cool, as new industry standards are brought forward. Uh, planted on or off site as approved as part of a site plan or administrative site plan or on any city owned property with the approval of the planning Office of Planning Sustainability in consultation with the city's tree warden. Unless such trees are public shade trees as per MGL 87, replacement trees shall be calculated so that each inch of diameter of breast height for the removed trees, there shall be no less than half inch of caliper diameter of replacement trees. Mm -hmm. So this is where we did have a discussion. Uh, we, uh, David, Sue and I had a discussion about this and then I brought this forward to Carolyn and Wayne and they were more inclined to actually reduce the DBH of the whole tree overall than tamper with this half inch of caliper diameter of replacement trees. Um, replacement trees shall have a minimum of one inch, cali uh, one inch caliper diameter because of the, original, um, the original one was 2.5 inches. This was before this was changed the last time. Um, the reasoning for that is that we hope to get actually more bang for our buck and get more trees instead of actually getting one two and a half inch caliper B and D tree. Um, people could go as, as far as a minimum of a one inch caliper tree that could potentially be in a grow bag, which would provide more potential canopy cover. Um, okay, it's six o'clock. Do you want to stop or do you want to continue? This is the end of it right here. I'm okay with continuing. Uh, Marilyn, you're the one. Marilyn, how about are you, you okay with that? Yep. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll try to go through this quickly. Um, C, replacement trees shall be maintained in good health 
uh, a minimum of 24 months after they are uh, planted as confirmed by the city's tree warden. If replacement trees are not found to be in good health as determined by the tree warden, the tree shall be replaced as directed by the warden. Replacement trees shall be either approved street tree species as defined in the rules and regulations regarding subdivisions of land or other trees that are hardy in all of the USDA plant hardiness zones. So that- yeah, why, why doesn't it just refer to our tree planting list? I, good, uh, good, good question. I need to go back in my notes and find out why. So that's a question for me. So that is uh, section, I'm just gonna minimize this for a second just to help me look at this. This is section E. Part D, E, D, okay. I'll, okay, replacement trees. Uh, two, uh, pay funds to, this, uh, to the city for a tree replacement fund and account that the planning board's estimate will allow the city to plant new K trees on city property in accordance with the above formula. So they deleted public because what this did is this constrained um, us to only planting trees that in the public right of way. Mm -hmm. So for example, they used um, funds from uh, this fund to plant all the trees uh, at the Pine Grove Country Club, which is wow. a reforestation project. Mm -hmm. Which, in my opinion, is is a is a good thing because the carbon sink that those trees will provide over time is probably much greater than, um, you know, a lot of the canopy trees that we will be planting because the trees in the public right of way don't live as long um, as trees that are planted in the middle of nowhere, providing there's no, you know, uh, deer pressure. Um, F Sue is a protection of trees during construction. Yes. Get rid of significant. Yep. Uh, and then the same with one, any mm -hmm. trees to be retained and any replacement trees on a property where demolition and or construction activity is planned shall be protected in an area shown on the approved site plan and should follow the city's tree list and planting guidelines and the American National Standards Institute ANSI A300 standards for tree care practices. So we have sort of a double whammy there. We have mm -hmm. our city's tree list and planting guidelines and the uh, ANSI A300 standards, which uh, govern all tree care, um, uh, all tree care standards from planting to protection, to cabling, to bracing, to planting. Um, two, uh, the protected area shall exceed both the critical root zone and the drip line of each significant tree. We need to get rid of significant yep. there. Got that. Unless the planning board approves an alternate maintenance and tree protection plan submitted by a certified arborist. Uh, certified arbor shall submit a written letter to the building commissioner, tree warden, and office of planning sustainability, certifying that such area has been so protected in accordance with the site plan. Um, record keeping. Uh, the Department of Planning and Sustainability shall collect annual totals of the number and diameter of breast height measurements of, of significant trees preserved yeah. in place. G. Yeah, and then she's she also has a little caveat down here that says replace significant to mature canopy. So that we need to oh. talk to her about that as well. But that's not correct because we're just going to say tree. Um, and it's just, that's the end of the STO. That is it. Can you explain one more time the rationale of? The whole thing about the diameter replacement, how a one inch tree would only have to be replaced by a half inch, or let's say a five inch diameter tree would only have to be replaced by a total of two and a half inches caliper diameter. Why do they reduce the number by half? Two reasons. One, because in order to replace, in order to, I think it's two reasons. One, it's financial mitigation, because the amount of strain it would put on a project that is massive that, uh, for example, some of the uh, projects at Village Hill, 
if they were they were under the STO, which a few of them were, um, the replacement of the trees would be financially so burdensome. I think the planning sustainability wanted to come to a happy medium. So they, they at the time, did half the caliper uh, diameter of replacement trees. The other problem is, is that if a developer did not want to pay the mitigation fees of the full caliper, then they would be required to plant full caliper replacement within the project limits or somewhere else in the city. And it probably is it's not possible given that there's property constraints. Mm. But I think this, is a, this has been sort of a, um, um, a marriage uh, between um, what's palatable financially for a developer so you know if and i think planning sustainability is concerned that if we decide to do an inch for inch replacement then um we would you know squash development or we would put such a burden on the development would be would not be beneficial and not also reach all the other sustainable goals um of trying to build a, a, a affordable housing or buildings that are net zero um etc yeah, I get that. I'm I'm just I still stay concerned that it um undervalues the trees. Oh, there's absolutely no question. I think it just undervalues the trees at all. And I don't I don't think um I I totally agree with you. And I, I can see why they wanted to do it, but I yeah. And I really wish that I was there for the conversation from the beginning when this came to inception. This was done before I was the tree warden and before we were formed as a commission. So I. A I few years ago, we had a lengthy discussion and Molly, you did a really good job of showing us the exponential or however you want to say it, benefit for trees at different sizes and the idea of replacement and we all agreed that the true replacement of a tree would be a lot, way more than our culture can bear, mm. our economy can bear. Mm. Yeah, it clearly is. And that's, that is, um, I mean, because don't forget this ordinance only talks about the DBH. So you're just talking about this. Yeah, right. right. That's, that's the conversation we had a few years ago. It doesn't talk about all the wood mass that's above the DBH. It doesn't talk about right. all the carbon sequestration. You know, you're just replacing this. Not um, even, no, not even this. You're just replacing this. Yeah, you are. True. Sorry, you're right. You're only, you're only replacing this, which is half right. of the biomass at that four and a half foot measure off the ground. Um, I think the yeah. only person who wasn't there was David. Just to want to make sure he, he knows we've gone into depth on this and these these replacements are a pittance of of the re, of the real value, yeah. and that's what we have to live with. Yeah, well, we, we live with a with the hope that the whatever is constructed um, has some balancing value, and I think that's what the planning mm. people are trying to do. They're trying to say let's get people to build in close to town so that there'll be fewer cars and more bicycles mm -hmm. and that and try and prevent them from easily building out further out that's why the six inch limit so they're yeah. trying to shape a certain kind of development mm -hmm. um, i've heard carolyn talk in a, in another meeting about a public meeting about just how much better new building is than our old building stock in terms of energy Mm. Yeah. Yeah, clear, yeah, clearly that's been brought up many times and it's true. Um, so we're 10 after six. Um, I don't want to rush anyone. Um, if you want to continue to have more conversation about this or uh, how would you like to proceed? I'm going to have to get going, Rich. Sorry. Okay. That's okay, Marilyn. That's fine. I, I, I actually think we should probably digest all this and then uh sue would you mind sending me or sending all of us an email actually you can send all of us an email that just talks makes the changes that we noted okay it doesn't have to be anything fancy 
Um, and then I ask all of you to take a look at this and we can come back at our next meeting and revisit this mm -hmm. like as a full commission. If that's okay with everyone or I also yeah. like to have, I like to have Jen weigh in on it. As mm -hmm. well. <clears throat> David, do you have any comments? Uh, well, is the, are, is, will there be an opportunity back and forth with Sue to provide, or or are we voting on? We're not voting on any. We're not. All right. I'm not voting on. We're not voting on anything. Yeah. I think I would like Sue to. Uh, I would like Sue to send all of us the suggested changes that we talked about. If 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 any of you want to send me a particular paragraph that you want reworked, please send me the wording directly. Just you or everybody? If you send it to me, then I can't have, then basically we can't really, have, if you send it to me, we can, yes, we, yeah, you can send it to everyone, but we can't discuss it back and forth. The next time we discuss it is in another meeting. Okay. So yeah, yes, you, you can send one email, but no one just, no one can respond to it. The, um, in our um, folder, our shared drive, Yes. There's a there's a document that says 350 12.3. Is that um, the same version as this, or is that an old version? So there's one version in there that's ours. There were there were our recommended our proposed changes, and this was theirs. I will make sure that that is clear in the title of the document. Yeah. Because one is one says uh, PNS SDO changes. The other one says UFC. Oh, you know, this one just says 350-12.3 significant trees dot PDF. That's probably that's probably an original one that uh, doesn't have any changes. So the original one, I don't see any DBH mentioned at all. Is that right? It, I well, let me let me stop sharing this if everyone's OK with that. OK. Um, Okay, so yeah, that that's SDO, but it's a PDF. Is that the yeah. one you're talking about? Yeah, there's also a Word document. They're probably the same, but I was just looking at yeah. the PDF. So th this is this is um, this is a copy of the actual um, ordinance as it's written presently. Huh. So that it looks like, am I correct? There is no, um, there's no diameter limit specified for what makes the tree significant. There is, this is just this, that is in um, the zoning, the beginning of the zoning ordinance as well, the definitions are. That's a different. Oh, is that in our shared drive? Uh, yes. Yes, chapter, uh, so chapter three, where it says chapter 350 zoning definitions. Oh, okay, great, 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 okay. Ah, yep. oh, all so right. That's under 350.21 general. All right. Yeah, because I just wanted to compare what we're doing now with what we had before. Okay. Okay. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Anyone else have any questions? I see we lost Marilyn. Oh yeah, 20 inches. Okay. So I I think uh, if you if you can send if you can do, you can email everyone what you think you'd like to see or tweaks, and then we can just you can read them all, but you just can't discuss any of it with anyone okay. through uh, email, and then we can reconvene. Um, I can reach out to you individually to make sure that your item gets on the agenda or for clarification. But other than that, we can't discuss it. Everyone is okay with that. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So six fifteen. Anyone else have any other comments before we close out this portion? Okay. Um, remainder of our agenda. So I. I don't have any other business anticipated by the chair. Do any anyone else have anything they want to add? And Molly, I will just do our spotter lantern fly at our next meeting. If that's yeah. okay. I'll just say one quick thing is I just I didn't completed another survey area 
um, part of downtown, like Con Street, more or less area. And there's um, there's a place where there's some Atlantis seeds that really should be picked up and um, put in bags and thrown away. Um, and I'm wondering if there's anybody who is interested in doing or helping that, um, I can tell you where those trees are. It's just a small area. Is it on public property or private property? It's on Smith College property. It's on their, their stump dump area above the Gazette building. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, 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 I know where, yep. It's a small area that I think we should just, um, like if we could just collect those seeds and have them not spread, it would be good because they've already spread to um, the Gazette building. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the only thing is that if you're gonna be on their property, you probably just need to get permission. Mm -hmm. So send, send, me the, send me the email and I'll try to figure out who to contact at Smith. Okay. All right? Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Anyone else have anything they'd like to add? Okay. Um, I will entertain uh, a motion. Oh, we didn't get to talk about the um, seedling brochure. So if you could please take a moment to revisit the seedling brochure and send me any of your uh, requests or comments about what's on there. If you don't have a copy of it, I did send it, I'll send you another one. I was looking at it and I wondered, you know, how does it fit in with our, you know, our goals? Um, of course, everybody wants a flowering. You got to have a flowering on there mm -hmm. and they always run out really fast. <laughs> Yeah. But um, uh, but Rich, I, and I, Rich and I were wondering if the red mulberry would be flowering because uh, we're not certain whether it's male. Oh, oh. I'm going to say goodbye. Yep. All right. So, all right. Nice to so, see you all. Thank you. Bye. Nice to see you, Rob. Bye, Rob. Okay. Um, so, I motion to adjourn the meeting. I will. Okay. So, I'll, I'll second that. Any discussion? No discussion? All in favor, just raise your hands, please. All right, thank you.